Hello, my name is Jack Holman, and today I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about introductory welding. Over the past year, I have been working on what my school calls a capstone project, and I've been learning how to weld with my mentor, Craig Vandervoort, who has taught me the basics and gotten me into welding in general. So today, I'm hoping to share a few tips and a few do's and don'ts while you're welding, and hopefully help those who are starting out while they're learning to weld. The first thing I'd like to go over today would be safety. Now, before you start, I highly encourage everyone to read the safety manual included in your welding kit. Learn the do's, don'ts, make sure you know what to do in the event of a fire or injury to yourself or others. I highly encourage anyone doing this to have a mentor with experience in welding. Make sure you have someone who knows what they're doing and who can help you in the event of, emer of an emergency or that something goes wrong. While you're welding, you're also going to want to have proper attire, so long sleeve shirts and jeans. Uh, be careful when you choose what you're wearing because odds are that it will get burned or have scorch marks on it to some degree. Safety gear for welding includes the welding mask, which I have up here. This protects you against brightness while we are welding, because when you're working with materials that get this hot, uh, they do give off a lot of light, and you're going to want to be protected from that. It's also very hard to see while you're welding, and this gives you more visibility while you're doing it. The welding cap is also critical. This protects your hair from any sparks that may come up while you're welding and if you're wearing if you have long hair, I highly encourage you to put it in a ponytail or just make sure it's out of the way and there's no danger of it catching on fire. Also the gas mask, this is to protect you while you're welding also. I have heard a few horror stories of people getting diseases or cancers because they were welding for a long period of time and it's just better to have a gas mask on to filter out any hazardous material you may breathe in while you're welding. Also, finally, I encourage everyone to check their surroundings. Make sure there's nothing flammable or nothing that can uh, catch on fire while <coughs> you're welding. So just be careful and use common knowledge. Uh, once again, these are just tips. I'm not encouraging anyone to do this on their own. Please have someone who knows what they're doing. Read the manual. I do not want anyone getting hurt and take the proper safety precautions. Now, let's get into the actual project. For my capstone project, I decided that I would make two block letters, a block letter U and a block letter A, for my school, Upper Arlington, which is kind of a symbol or logo for us. I, would, I decided I would make the block letters out of this old piece of metal that I have here, and I was going to transform that metal into the block letters I needed. So the first thing I did was I took measurements on the piece of scrap metal. Uh, you want to make sure they're accurate, precise, feel free to mark on it with Sharpie uh, because, quite frankly, it's going to be welded off or it won't be visible by the end of this project. Next step in this process was planning. Using the measurements that I got from the piece of scrap metal, I was able to determine the size, the length of the block letters that I was going to need and account for which piece would attach to which and this, the amount of material that I would need to finish this. Once I had created the plan that you see up here, I actually took cardboard and glued them together to make sure it was what I wanted. So when you're creating your own project, I highly recommend drawing it out, making sure you have all the details planned for, and then, even if you can, uh, make a prototype to make sure that it will work well, because it's very hard to recover from some of the mistakes you make later on. So, now that I had everything planned out, uh, it was time to cut up the piece of metal. So, I used the plasma cutter to cut open the metal that I had, and cut it into the pieces that I would need for the block letters. 
as you can see the plasma cutter uh, gets very hot and the way it works is it shoots electrons basically at the metal and this breaks the metal cuts it evenly so that way I'd be able to get this pieces that I needed for my block letters so once I had all the pieces cut up all I needed was to weld them together and the first letter I was going to do was a block letter U, which was going to be made using a process called TIG welding. TIG welding is very difficult. It is a much more lengthy project or process than its counterpart of MIG welding. And the first thing I wanted to do before actually welding the pieces together was make a practice weld. Now, practice welds are used to determine the amount of amps or power you have while welding and make sure that you're able to weld correctly with the materials you have. So what I did here was I took a metal of the same composition and relatively same thickness and I made a few cuts of my own onto the metal. I then uh, cleaned them off and actually started making welds on here to determine the proper amount of amps that I would have while I was TIG welding. Uh, as you can see here, the first few, they weren't, didn't have enough power, and there was one where I actually overdid it. So, <clears throat> the best one was right here, and that was with the proper amount of amps, and it got the best pleasing product. Uh, as my mentor says, you're looking for stacked pennies, or stacked nickels. You want a nice, clean, bubbled uh, texture for your welds while you're TIG welding. So, <clears throat> the next part of this, uh, you want to remove rust and other materials from your metals while you're welding. TIG welding needs to be very clean. Uh, if there's any rust or foreign contaminants on it, it's going to be very difficult and it's not going to be as effective. So, what I did was I cleaned off any foreign material using a grinder right here and I made them all shiny and made sure there was no foreign material on it before I started welding. Once that was done, uh, I would actually start to TIG weld. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, pictures of me actually TIG welding, but I do have me setting up for the process. So, <clears throat> the parts of the TIG weld that you need need to be cleaned off every so often. If the tip of the welding machine gets any foreign metals on it or any melted parts on it you're gonna have to clean it off again take it to, take the tip to the grinder and clean off any foreign material from it you're also going to have to manually insert any <coughs> copper the copper adhesive to the metals you're welding which is much more difficult than MIG welding again but we'll get to that later uh, also I forgot to mention this earlier when I was going over safety procedure, but be sure to wear gloves while you're welding. It seems like a no-brainer, but just to be sure. So tips for when you're actually TIG welding. Uh, determine the proper amount of amps and brightness settings on your helmet before you start. So from the practice weld, use the same amount of amps and use that while you're welding. Um, also, while you're in the practice weld, you should have uh, set the brightness settings on your helmet to be accurate. You want to be able to see what you're doing, and it is very difficult if you're blinded to weld correctly. Um, so when you're welding, quickly tap the desired metals and hold approximately 1-2 to two inches away. <clears throat> when you're welding, it's the metals around it are going to get very hot and molten at a certain point. So you're going to see kind of like a pool of heated metal and then use the copper adhesive to drag the pool around to where you want to weld. This was one of my better welds for the block letter U and as you can see it has the slight stacked pennies feature that we've been looking for. You also want to make sure that the weld isn't just melting onto the metal, it's melting the metal around it itself, which is why you want the pool around you to make sure that all metals are being melted together. 
It is possible just to melt the copper adhesive first, but that does nothing and it's very weak. So you want to be sure that all metals are being melted around it and sticking together. So this was the final TIG welding product. It's my block letter U. Uh, I had to make welds here, 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 and then on the underside, which you can't see, on the back of here, 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 and here. Uh, you want to look for discoloration around around the welds. It usually means that it got to the proper heat and that the metal around it was also melted into the pool. Uh, don't worry about the discoloration. It can be removed later using polisher or a grinder. So it's just a short-term effect. So now we can move on to MIG welding. MIG welding is significantly easier and faster than TIG welding. Um, the reason for this is because it actually feeds the copper adhesive through the welding machine and heats it up and spits it out at the metal that you're trying to weld together. So it only requires one hand to do it and you can use a free hand to stabilize uh, the metals or your welding gun while you're carrying this process out. Uh, however, there are two variables you need to account for. You still have to determine the proper amount of amps you need for MIG welding. And there's another feature, wire speed, which determines the rate at which the copper adhesive is sent out of the welding machine and onto the materials you're trying to weld. The metal adhesive is heated with the amps and then it's sent out at the certain speed, so just be sure to use the practice welds to determine the right ratio um, for what you're welding. You want to have the same safety gear as you did for TIG welding. Adjust the brightness settings because it may require more or less amps while you're MIG welding and <clears throat> I just want to advise you to be careful with MIG welding because it shoots out a lot faster and your first reaction is to go quickly through the weld but you want to slow down and wait for the pool again to make sure you're getting the metals proper properly melted together. So when you actually start MIG welding you want to make sure you have the materials tightly clamped together and that all parts are touching each other. Um, try not to move too fast again. You still want to create that characteristic puddle and if the copper adhesive does not melt the metals around it, it has to be redone and made sure that all metals are melted together and you have a solid, sturdy final product. So, once all welds are finished, uh, be sure all materials are cooled before touching or handling them. Properly store all materials. Ensure there are no fire hazard due to heated products or tools. Once again, be safe. Use common sense. Uh, I do not want anyone getting hurt because of this video or because they tried to do this on their own. So, keep to the buddy system. Have someone experience with you while you're doing this. Uh, final notes. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. Be safe above all else. Uh, do not get frustrated. Sometimes it takes time to weld correctly. There were a few times where I was learning TIG welding because it's just so much more difficult than MIG welding and got a bit upset. But if you push through it, you'll be able to learn. And I do not regret it at all. Like TIG welding helps create much sturdy material, much more sturdy materials, and a much more pleasing final product. Um, and finally, thank you to those who helped me in this project, uh, Mr. Vandervoort, my parents, uh, my teacher, is couldn't have been done without you, and I just want to say a final thank you. So good luck to any beginner welders, and I hope this video helped.